and welcome to July's first art journal page. Um, I've got a selection of acrylic paints here, and basically I just brought all, out all these different paints to show you that um, as long as you stay inside the same type, then your paints are going to work together. Because I know that some of us have more expensive paints, and some of us have some cheaper craft paints, and I have a very wide selection here. I have some like 50 cent craft paints, I have some dollar craft paints, I have $5 tubes of paint, I have $8 tubes of paint. It doesn't really matter um, because they're all acrylic. So they're all the same base and uh, they're all going to work together um, to a certain extent. They'll all bond together and create kind of a background in, on my project, which is what I'm going for today. I'm really getting down some color and I'm using my fingers and kind of really like feeling the paint and working it around and just going with something that is, um, that is, that just feels good, that feels right. And some people kind of call it, not kind of, some people do call it intuitive painting, but I am more just having fun. Uh, I'm not going for anything specific. I am just going with a color palette that I have seemed to kind of gravitate towards lately. I'm adding in some teals and greens, uh, yellow, and then I keep going back in with a little bit of white as well. I also have a light blue. And the different paints I'm using, I have Americana Craft Paints, I have Glick Paint, I have Craft Smart Paint, Folk Art Paint, and then I also have the Ranger Dina Wakely Paints out. So a few different kinds here. And just heating um, in between some of my layers. And what happens is while the paints are wet, then they mix together and you get kind of a blended effect. But if you dry between the layers, then uh, the colors are just going to lay on top of each other. And it can be a really great effect. So that's how I added back in some white because I really like white space in my projects. Uh, now I'm using some stencils. Some of these are Umwow, or these are Umwow Studio stencils. They come in the four by six size, and it's a, a very thick plastic that gives me some really great texture. But the paint that I was using was a little bit thin, and so it tended to seep underneath the stencil. So instead of scraping it on that particular color, I just got out a sponge. And what I'm doing now is I'm marrying colors together. So you can see right there, that was a really great example where the where I used the, the stencil letters stencil because in the bottom corner I had that teal and then right above it I had the green and it was a little bit harsh where the colors touched. So I'm, I'm using the pattern to blend out the teal into the green and now they're layering together and everything's kind of moving in a more in a more motion, in more motion, um, the line is not so harsh between the colors is what I'm getting at. It's more married now. And that's why I'm using my stencils. I'm also splattering some paint. Um, when you do this, uh, when I do this, I just put down a little bit of paint and then give it a squirt with some water. Use a paintbrush that's long and skinny that has um, a pointed end to it. That's really going to help you get some kind of like nice fine splatters. If you want huge chunky splatters, try like a wash brush or a mop brush, but the thing about those is that they need more paint and water in the bristles for you to be able to splash them. So you kind of get what you get, you know, and, and you'll definitely get a hang of the things you like if uh, if you just practice and use some different paint brushes to make splatters. I've gone back to the stencils and that's really what, what kind of the bulk of this, this lesson was about in class and what this lesson is about in the video as well. Um, it's about using different tools and and things that you have on hand to make a cohesive background with more than one color. Because where the colors meet, there tends to be kind of like a harsh line and sometimes they may, might not uh, blend together well. But by using things like stencils and mark making tools, which are what I have out now, and even stamps and other brush strokes and things like that, uh, you can help bridge the gap between two colors. And you can really create this like gorgeous, cohesive, just really fun background with all these different textures and marks and, and things that you can really, really spend a lot of time looking at and getting, getting great depth from. 
Uh, some of the things I've used, there was a square button. I used a, a cap of some type to create the round one. What I've got now is a sponge. It's like a really, really, really dense textured sponge with lots of big holes in it. That right there is a piece of chipboard that is shaped like um, chev it's chevrons. It's a big, chunky chevron border that um, Wow Studio has. And you can see right on top of it, there's a little cap from a water bottle. I'm doing more splattering because that always really, really helps kind of marry everything together and make it more cohesive. Um, the, the paint that I'm using for white, I am using a titanium white by Blick, and I really like the starkness that it tends to have. Um, I'm doing a bit of stamping. The thing about stamping when you're stamping in acrylic paint, I tend not to wash my mark makers because I don't mind as much. And my mark makers tend to be like junk or just things that I find laying around. But my stamps, one, because they're more expensive, and two, I mean, they're quite an investment. And two, I'll also be using them for ink and other things. When you are done um, stamping them with paint, you definitely need to give them a wash. You don't let that paint dry because it can bond uh, to the rubber that your stamps are made of. And the stamps that I'm using are Viva Las Vegas stamps. A couple I designed and a couple that have been there for quite a while. And I just love the huge variety that VLVS has. And they're near and dear to my heart. You can see now that I, I'm going back and forth between stenciling and mark making, splattering and stamping. And I'm not really thinking so much about it. What I'm thinking most about is marrying the colors and, and breaking up the harsh uh, borders that are between them. And I'm and what I'm not thinking about is specifically what I'm doing because I want to have fun, right? I want I just want to have lots of different patterns and textures. And if you think too much about it, then you then you say, oh, what if this one doesn't match that one? And what if that one doesn't go here? And that's not really what we're aiming for. We're just aiming for, and I keep saying this, like a cohesive background that reads really great from left to right or right to left, top to bottom, or bottom to top. And here, I did just now introduce some of the gray paint that I had neglected to use in the background in the beginning. But you can see I'm taking um, whatever. You can use a paintbrush. I was using a, like a catalyst tool from Princeton, um, the, big, the big ones. And I was just dipping the handle rather than the wedge part in some paint and creating like little dots. They're a little bit more specific than splatters, but because it's a handle, when I use the paint in one spot, then some of the paint has obviously transferred to the background, and then it creates a smaller circle the next time I dab it. And I just keep doing that over and over, and, and that really creates some great, uh, great textured areas. So just keep in mind some of the things you've used, right? Stencils, stamps, mark makers, the back hands of tools, um, things like that. And here I am adding in some black with my fine liner because I have to have black. I always have to have black and white. And I don't know, I think it's just, just something I have to have. It, it's hardwired into my brain. If there's no black on it, then it can't be complete. And that doesn't mean that the whole thing has to be black. I just have to be able to see some somewhere. And that's definitely a personal thing. So be sure um, to keep that in mind when you're art journaling. You know, there are certain things that you like and uh, you should always be using those. If they make you happy, don't, you know, don't, don't push those things away. Kind of bring towards you, you know, what makes you happy. And here I'm doing some more stamping. Now this time in ink, and as I mentioned, I did have to clean my stamp earlier so the paint didn't dry in it, but I'm stamping in black so you can see. And I have some leftover paint here, and this is um, something that I that I really stress to my class too because you don't want to waste that paint and if you just let it dry on your paper then you're gonna probably throw it away so um you can have a journal or just some scrap pieces of paper but just sop up that paint it's a lot of people call them a smush backgrounds just smush some paint onto the background and you can always use it at a later date for something or die cut it into pieces or anything like that I just did a little bit more stamping with some black and I'm going to do a little bit of black mark making and and I really feel like after all the colors um, have been played with in the background I really do enjoy coming back in with a with a bit of black and white like I mentioned before.
apparently I wasn't too happy with that specific mark there, so. <laughs> And now I'm going to mask for something that's pretty specific. Uh, I wanted some horizontal lines across. And I'm not sure if in the beginning I wanted thick ones when I was thinking about it. But as I started laying the tape down, I thought, what if I had some really thin ones? Those would be nice and cool and, and quite different uh, from everything I tend to do. So I ended up masking. And this is painter's tape. It's the blue tape. Um, I ended up masking everything out and I left these like really thin pinstriped lines and I um, am using golden fluid acrylic and I'm getting that spread out as quick as I can in those open areas because I'm going to spray them because it's golden fluid, I can spray them and it's going to drip. So I have to move really, really quick here. If I had been a little bit smarter, I suppose I could have done half the page, but uh, that's all right. Just go for it. And see, so I don't mind that some of the paint has seeped under because now I am going to lift up my page and squirt with regular water. And while it's still wet because it's because it's golden fluid acrylic, it's really going to get a nice a nice run to it. So I've got these now kind of like grungy stripes and they added a little bit of milkiness to the top it where it really started to run. It's very cool, very cool technique. I really like it. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. And in some places where I wanted some more to run, I have just gone in and added a little bit of the paint back right on top. And I didn't remask because that's not the that's not the important part at this point. I have the horizontal stripes that I like. Now I just wanted some more paint to run. Now this portion here, um, I'm using a mask from Unwell Studio, but I didn't give it enough time, and I didn't I didn't take my time with it. I was trying to hurry, and so. Um, it didn't it didn't work out I I was just being too fast with it and I didn't hold it down well enough and my paint started to seep underneath and and I just worked it too much like you can't work things too much otherwise they'll uh, they'll it just it's not gonna work um, the more you work the paint over the stencil then the more it the, the more chances it has to seep under and and you really just gotta gotta do it right the first time so what I was aiming for was that background to show through where the mask was, but it didn't really work out. And that's okay, because then it just gave me the opportunity opportunity to do something else. And uh, that's an important part of art too, you know, is to kind of go with your gut and if it doesn't look right or if it wasn't exactly what you're going for, move on, try something else. Um, it'll give your brain a chance to kind of like kick into gear and, and help you really uh, help you really fix it or, or work it out. So. Instead, I just ended up whiting out some area in the shape of the heart because um, I designed all of Amwa Studio's chipboard and stencils and everything. I also designed stamps for Viva Las Vegas stamps. So sometimes when I have what I think tends to be um, <laughs> a genius idea, then I make a couple different versions. So I have a chipboard heart like that. I have a mask like that. And then I also did a stamp for Viva Las Vegas stamps. So I got the chance to add back in some black and... Um, I actually really like this better than the intended version. So I just stamped in archival ink with that with that scribble heart stamp from Viva Las Vegas stamps. Did a little more splattering, and you can see I splattered with a fine liner and a paintbrush too. And then just heat everything. And that is the extent of this page. So thank you very much for joining me again. And uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group, and you can see other things um, that other people are doing and kind of keep up to date. Thanks so much.